Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna have quite a few topics actually, but first on repertoire we're gonna have William Bonek, and right here you are looking at an amazing back double bicep. The only flaw in this back double bicep is the structure, the waist is a little bit too big and overall the physique is too blocky, but that's not the point, the point here is the news that Bonak also joined the Kuwait crew, the camel crew, as he says, finally I got the taste of that anabolic chicken, <laughs> and you guys know what that means, so he tags Abdullah, who is the coach of Brandon Curry, who became the coach of Akim Williams recently, and now he's working with William Bonak as well, two times Arnold Classic champion, and most likely the 2021 Arnold Classic champ. Now, the interesting thing here is why did he post this photo exactly? Is this photo from the Kuwait? Did he move to Kuwait to train for Arnold Classic? I honestly doubt that, because at this point there is less than four weeks until Arnold Classic, and he would have to travel to the Kuwait to be there for like a week or two, and then to travel to the US to compete, of course, he's not gonna do that. Now, I'm not sure which gym is this, but this is obviously an older photo, this is not the most recent update, you can see that the quality is poor, so my best guess is that this is the photo that he took in Kuwait whenever he was there, and now he posted it for that same reason, there is another photo, as you can see, it's a photo with Abdullah, and obviously here you can see that both of these guys look much younger, so it's just a photo that they took a long time ago and they posted it, so obviously Abdullah is going to be online coaching Bonak. I think that's phenomenal news, I think William Bonak was at his best while he was still working with Neil Hill, after they fell apart, he was prepping himself with the help of his friend, and that, I mean, he still was winning Arnold Classic and placing in top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, but I feel like if he kept working with Neil Hill, he would have probably done better at the Mr. Olympia at least, because at the Arnold he couldn't have done any better than that, but uh, look, I mean, at the 2019 Arnold Classic, which was the last show that he did with Neil Hill, it was his best ever. He was climbing, he was looking better every next show, and then he declined a little. So, I think it's obviously the best idea for Bonak to be coached by somebody. I don't know what kind of chemistry will he have with Abdullah, is that gonna work out like it was with Neil Hill? I don't know, because Neil really worked a long time with him, but I still think it's a great idea for Bonak to have an actual coach, somebody who is on that super high level. I think it would be awesome if he went over to Kuwait and was super focused and trained over there, but I don't think Bonak really needs that kind of improvement as far as training, I think he's maxed out as far as muscular development, maturity, density, thickness, uh, you name it, everything as far as his muscularity is, is done, he just needs to be in shape, and I think Abdullah will help him with that, you know, be as full and as ripped as he needs to be. In the caption of this photo, of this post, of this announcement, he says, teamed up with Abdullah, we have put up a formula together with a bit of old mix with new flavor. Let's see what the future holds. Bader, he, ta he talks about Bader Budai, Bader, sir, hopefully you got my camel ready for the ride. Ready or not, here we come, and he puts two emojis of crowns. So, two emojis, then he also adds, road to Arnold Sports and Mr. Olympia, he is planning on winning Arnold Classic and Mr. Olympia, and I love to see that, I love to see the spirit, I love the fact that he wants it, and that he is bold enough to say it, to say that he wants to win the Mr. Olympia, is this possible? Can William Bonak actually win the Mr. Olympia? Why not? Why not? The only argument that I hear about is that he can't win the Mr. Olympia is because of his structure, because he's not a big guy, he's a short guy, he has small structure, he has wide waist, he, he's blocky and stuff like that, but does that really matter? If you are the best bodybuilder on that stage, you're going to win the show, it doesn't matter what kind of structure you have, maybe, maybe, if you're going to be the representation of all bodybuilding, the best bodybuilder in the world, the king, then maybe it does matter, it does play a role a little bit, they would definitely prefer a big guy for that, for that victory, but if he nails it, if he kills everybody, which is entirely possible, he can win it, 
he beat Big Grammy and actually Grammy was third and William Bonac won the Arnold Classic last year. So if Big Grammy is off again, he can take him out. It's gonna be challenging for him to take out Brandon Curry. Now he needs to be completely on and Brandon needs to be a little bit off. 2019 Arnold Classic, Brandon was able to beat a very good Bonac, but I think it's because Brandon was at his best. If Bonac brought the same shape from 2019 Arnold Classic to the Mr. Olympia 2019, I think Bonac would, would have won because Brandon wasn't as good. But they were both a little bit uh, off and that's why Brandon won. Then you also have Hadi, but Bonac beat him a year before. Last year he didn't, but Bonac was off. So if Bonac really is on and he took an offseason, he is fresh, I expect him to be much improved. And if the chemistry between him and Abdullah actually works out, we can see a much improved version of Bonac. And I can definitely imagine, I can definitely see him winning Mr. Olympia also. But as far as Arnold Classic, I definitely do have him as my top runner. And I'm sure everybody else should because he is the two times champ and uh, he seems to be bringing it. Last time when I updated on his, on his uh, photo that he posted, he actually made a story saying that he's not posting any recent photos. That photo was at like uh, 8 weeks out. So we really have no idea what Bonac is looking like now. I think uh, that's a part of his game. I think he's actually looking amazing and that's why he's hiding it. Because he wants to surprise everybody and just uh, nail every show that he does Arnold and Mr. Olympia. So expect William Bonac to, to bring it this year. Alright, maybe we made a little bit of a leap there, talking about whether he can win the Mr. Olympia without even discussing can he win Arnold Classic. Because even though Mr. Olympia is of course much higher a level of competition, you have Big Ram, you have Brandon Kerr, you have Hari Chupan, and those guys are not doing the Arnold Classic, still you have some really heavy hitters at the Arnold Classic. So, Steve Kuklo. Steve Kuklo wanted to win the Texas Pro with ease, he didn't want to push it to the max, he wanted an easy qualification, he probably didn't see Ian Wallier coming and taking it away from him, he probably thought he can win that one easily and then hammer it down for the Mr. Olympia, that didn't happen, he lost that Texas Pro and he was not happy about it. Now his only chance to get to the Mr. Olympia stage is winning that Arnold Classic, so his motivation to win it is way higher than Bonex. Bonex was top 5 at the Olympia, so he can go over there without qualifying. Not the case with Steve, he needs to win the Arnold Classic, can he actually do it? An interesting comment was posted by Sergio Oliva, he says, I have a feeling Texas Pro is gonna end up being one of the best things to happen to you, as crazy as that sounds. And it doesn't sound crazy at all, it's only logical, it makes sense, that's the first thing that I thought back when he lost the Texas Pro and said that he needs to win the Arnold Classic, that's gonna force him to really bring his absolute best. And uh, before I say anything else, I need to admire this photo for a second. Take a look at this most muscle right here, this guy is a freak how big he is, he's going to dwarf William Bonac. he is going to be ripped as well. Look at the conditioning, I mean yeah, this is anabolic lighting, this is a great lighting and his details look really, really deep. I don't think I ever saw Steve Kuklo being this shredded. He gets lean, don't get me wrong, but you never really see the deep cuts, deep strations, you know, the muscle kind of looks dead, usually, but not here, not here. Look at the chest striations, look at the muscle fibers, it looks so alive, so I am... Pretty sure that this is going to be the best Steve Kuklo we saw up to date. And I think he's going to be able to beat Ian Valier this time around. Even though I expect Ian to be better, I still think Steve has better structure. And if he brings the conditioning, I think that's why Ian won that access probably because of the conditioning. If Steve improves conditioning, comes full, I think he's going to be the top two. Can he beat Bonek? It will be a surprise, but I, I don't think it's impossible. I do have Bonac winning that show, but I wouldn't be too amazed, I wouldn't be too shocked if Steve won it. I would love to see that actually, it would be just really a, a big upset. That would definitely give a lot of stock to, to Steve and uh, a lot of people would expect him to do really well at the Mr. Olympia. He was top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, right? So he can definitely move a few spots up this year if he wins Arnold Classic 
and that's gonna be a crazy feat to accomplish, but he has all the tools, he has it. If he really, really nails it, if he gives it 110%, I don't see it being impossible. What do you guys think? This photo though looks absolutely amazing, crazy looking. So I mentioned Hadi before, and we have an actual update of this guy as well. He looks so massive, so dense, there is so much muscle on his frame, it just looks ridiculous. The vascularity, and this is the thing with him, you can always see the striations in the chest, in the shoulders, everywhere basically. You can still see like the, 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 the life in that muscle that you don't see on Steve Kuklu even when he is shredded. He needs to be completely dialed in. To show that kind of separation, but with Hardy, he does have that like in the offseason basically. So that's the that's the strength that Hardy has uh, over pretty much everybody up there. So I don't think I can imagine Steve Kuklo beating Hardy, but again, the structure, the size, it can definitely take him a long way. But Hardy looks amazing here and has a beautiful smile. So I definitely do have Hardy in the top five again. Can he leap a few spots ahead? Can he win the Mr. Olympia? I would not be too surprised. Am I a fan of his structure? Absolutely not. The structure, not the best. Back looks strange. Calves are too small compared to the, to the uh, quads. The forearms are smaller for sure. The arms look a little bit smaller as well. Uh, the shoulders look uh, oiled up. Uh, he has amazing muscle maturity, crazy striations to the chest, to the quads. So he does have a lot of strong features. If he manages to bring the same conditioning, the same fullness, if he peaks the same, he peaked for Vancouver Pro 2019, and if he made improvements in the past two years, I, but I believe he actually did make a lot of improvements, that would be probably an unbeatable package. But I think this is his best shape of his life, and that's something that happens probably like once in a lifetime, and the thing is, last year he didn't know if he's gonna be able to compete until the final moment, so he uh, was prepping under a lot of stress, if he's sure this year he can actually compete, and if he flies into the US two weeks before the show, or a week at least, last year I think he came like two days before the Mr. Olympia, if everything goes well for Hadi, we can definitely expect him to peak much much better, and that Hadi at his absolute best, with muscular improvements, you saw him train super hard in the offseason, I can definitely see him making more gains, if he actually is improved, and in this conditioning, that's gonna be a tough package to beat by anybody, and he can win the Mr. Olympia, again, the same thing like with Bonek, he doesn't have the best structure to be the Mr. Olympia, he doesn't really speak English, that's, I don't know if the judges are actually taking that into consideration, but it's definitely not helping the case, but can he be the best physique on that stage that night, Yes, I think he can. You must have noticed that I haven't really been mentioning Phil Heath when I was talking about the Mr. Olympia predictions. That's because we didn't really hear anything from him. He didn't say anything about doing the Mr. Olympia. And this is the most recent story that he posted where you can kind of see his physique. And he looks downsized. He does look much smaller. The legs look smaller. The, the torso looks smaller. Uh, the arm looks, I mean, Phil Heath is on for his arms, but they don't even look that impressive in this photo, the shoulders look uh, downsized. Now, that's the thing with Phil, when he takes his clothes off, when he's ready for the show, it's a complete different story. They all say in the clothes, he doesn't look very impressive. Same thing was with like Flex Wheeler or Dexter Jackson. These guys are short, they don't have the widest, the biggest structures. But when they take their clothes off, when they stand under the good lighting, with the pro tan on, with the oil on, when they're pumped, with their small joints, crazy looking muscle bellies, alive muscle, conditioning uh, on a crazy level, with all the details and everything, they just look bigger than everybody else who is actually much, much heavier than them. So saying that Phil Heath looks downsized doesn't really mean much. It's all about whether he's prepping or not, and whether his stomach is gonna look good or not. He showed us his stomach, it looked much, much better. Why is it much better? Is it because he simply downsized, he didn't eat a lot and he downsized, and he lost a lot of muscle for the sake of uh, losing the gut, and that's why he just wants to show off his stomach and doesn't want to compete? I don't know, maybe. So far, he didn't say anything about Mr. Olympia, we don't know if he's gonna be competing or not. In this photo though, he does look kind of small, and I wanted to share it with you, you tell me what do you think.
You guys know that I'm not really the biggest fan of Regan Grimes and his physique. His personality though I think is pretty boring. But after posting these photos, uh, I gotta say I became a fan, basically. It looks like he actually made a lot of improvements. In the first couple of updates that he posted, I thought, and I said that on the video, I said he doesn't look much improved. But then the next photo, and this photo in particular, he looks much better actually. It looks like he gained a lot more fullness, his legs look bigger, his arms look much more massive, he looks so filled up. There was a lot of talk about whether him or Chris Bumstead would win in an open show, because uh, Chris Bumstead destroyed Regan in classic physique, I think Regan was like 7th while Chris was 1st, but now in open bodybuilding I don't think it's even close, I think Regan would destroy, absolutely annihilate Chris because he gained so much mass. Chris is amazing, but he's not this big, this full, this round, this is bodybuilding. And this is classic in bodybuilding. Now, Regan, in classic physique, he has no chance. But when he represents his body in classical way in open bodybuilding, it just looks amazing. He has that. He has that about himself. And he should go for it. He should run with it. He shouldn't be a freak. Like, he shouldn't be posing like Branch Warren, because he doesn't have that kind of physique. He should be kind of like Cedric McMillan. That also goes well in open. But he has a lot of mass now, he kind of does look freaky, but still very beautiful, very aesthetic. If you guys are fans of bodybuilding and you like to see a lot of mass, you will appreciate this as a very aesthetically pleasing physique. It does look really amazing. Back was always his strong point, but now it looks even better. I mean, the glutes, the way they, 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 they're hanging there with the hamstrings and, and the quad sweep, and also the lower lats, the back, the traps. Look at the thickness in the traps, the arms, the rear delts. He looks so bubbly, and it's a very clean look. Extremely, extremely symmetrical. He has one of the best hamstrings, I think, in bodybuilding. I would go with him, Nick Walker, Phil Heath, Tom Platts. When I'm talking about all-time best hamstrings, probably Ronnie Coleman and some other guys, but Regan does have some really, really good hamstrings and the back looks really amazing. I just hope he's going to bring super high level of conditioning if he comes peeled. And I know it's not really the conditioning, it's kind of the maturity and the kind of look that he has. He sort of have this softer look, but if he's peeled and he's still bubbled like this in 3D, he can do really well at the Mr. Olympia, and I am honestly, I, I love his physique right now. What he posted here, I was amazed with it. I was looking at this for a while and I thought, wow, wow, what an amazing open bodybuilding physique. What a beautiful physique. Crazy looking pretty lines and a lot of mass, bubbly, 3D, yeah, you name it. Amazing physique overall, I'm impressed, for sure. And I'll have to end this video on a, a little bit more of a negative note. Uh, we have another death in bodybuilding. How many this year? This is crazy. This time it is Matt Mendenhall. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this guy, but he was one of the most popular guest posers back during the 80s and the 90s. He is arguably the best bodybuilder of all time who never turned pro. Unfortunately, he never did it. He was so close so many times, second spot, second spot, losing against uh, Lee Haney and all the other top pros back in the day, and he never won a pro card, but he was really good. He had some really uh, interesting, amazing, cartoonish features, really amazing physique overall. He died to, at the age of 61. The reasons are not known so far, but, you know, he's not exactly, he wasn't exactly super young. So it could be just natural reasons, and uh, yeah, I mean, he wasn't super old as well, it's a shame to die at that age, but it's not like he was 40 or 50 or anything like that. But he was an amazing bodybuilder, crazy legs, overall really interesting and beautiful physique, may he rest in peace, and as long as bodybuilding community exists, he will not be forgotten, he will stay alive in that sense, the best bodybuilder who never turned pro, Matt Mendenhall. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you want to see more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, all the best and bye bye.